We released uh, the Teams integration back in November, so some of this might be a review, but at the tail end, I wanted to kind of show you some of the new stuff that it's coming very imminently, uh, next few weeks slash month. What you're seeing right now is Teams, and in this middle area right here is a Power App. Our vision of bringing Power Apps to Teams is really to allow modern workplaces to customize their experience within Teams so that they never have to leave. You can already use Teams to collaborate with texting your various teammates, sharing files, information. You can integrate with all your different Office products. But with connecting to Power Apps, you can build custom forms and applications to support your everyday work process. So in this particular team, we're looking at operations. And we have in here a channel that allows you to process various returns that you might get from a day-to-day -day basis. So we have this app. We can go in and check out the process return app. I, mean, I have in here a, an AI model that can actually detect an image and tell me what the actual price and model of that uh, particular item is. And then I can fill this out and submit it. So how did I actually bring this Power App into Teams? Well, there's two different ways. The easiest way is we have a Power Apps app within Teams that allows you to add a tab. You can search for your application, select it, and click Save. That'll add it as a tab. But we have what well, we launched in November, which allows you to add a Teams app as a first class app within Teams. What that actually does is allows you to have an app show up as one of these first class tiles. So you can actually see in here the CT returns app is one such example that I've pinned right here. What this allows me to do is not only add it as another tab, so if I just click on this, save, they'll add it as a tab here. I can also add the same app into the app bar on the left. We call these personal apps. And what a personal app is, is what you just saw earlier, the, the operations team is, that's an app that's great for collaboration with other folks, but for applications, maybe your HR applications or time reporting applications, things that are specific to you, you can build those apps and pin them in the less bar and there's an overflow for additional apps. Uh, so you always have them. So let's see how I added these. When you pin it to the personal app section there, that's exactly what it's called, personal, right? That's for you, not for anybody else. Yes, and as an admin, so say you want everyone in the company to have a personal app, you can go into the admin portal and actually distribute an application uh, to everyone. And I'll show you what that looks like in a bit. Cool, great question. I like that because it's it's like the built-in bookmark bar in a web browser where you can just dial it in exactly to how you're working at that point in time. Exactly. It, the dream is for an information worker, you'll come to Teams in the morning, you'll kind of open it up. Everything that you need to get your job done is either pinned in the left rail or pinned as tabs within the various teams that you need uh, mm -hmm. to switch so you never actually have to leave. So within Power Apps itself, you want to bring your app into Teams. If you find the app that you want, in my case, it's CT Returns, you can click on the dot, 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 select this Add to Teams feature. If you go into the Apps list, you can also see we have an Add to Teams button. And what this does, once you get this panel and click Download App, is it generates an application package that Teams natively understands. So if we go back to Teams, you can see I download this zip file. And if I go to apps, I can actually upload what's called a custom application. Now, for most of y'all that aren't Teams admins, you'll just have uh, this option right here, upload for me or my Teams. And this allows you to get an application, pin it for yourself, uh, or pin it to one of your own Teams. But if you're an admin, you can actually upload it for the entire team. So you select that and find the file that I just downloaded. Doesn't matter if you have a PC or a Mac to do any of this. Exactly. Something good to point out. 
So this app already exists. Let me upload it for just me and so y'all can see what that looks like. Returns. And this is kind of the dialogue that you would see. If you click on the add button, it would add it into your personal app bar. The drop down allows you to select or search for a team. Uh, and I could fill this out and, and it would populate in the right spot. Now I mentioned as an admin, you're able to basically pre-populate the app bar with various apps for, for folks. So maybe you have a application for everyone to report their time. Uh, you want to make sure that every single person has it. Well, if you go to the Teams Admin Center, there's a whole section on Teams apps where you can manage your different applications, set up some permission policies. But we, what we care about are what's called setup policies. And what you can do is you can define new setup policies. You can see we have one for a first line worker, yeah. one for everyone. Let's go ahead and click on the first line worker. And you can actually define what people see on the very first day when they log into Teams. So the way it's defined right now is people will see activity, shifts, chat, and calling. I want them to also see the CT return app because I think it's really important that folks have this application every single day. Uh, let's see. Uh, this one I don't have edit access to, so we'll go to go global. Click add and search for CT returns. And the app that I uploaded earlier as an admin show up, I can click add, and then it will become one of the default applications in that left rail. I can even reorder it. Maybe it's so important that it should be the very first one, and then I can save. Now, it does take about 24 hours for this to propagate out, but this is a really great way if you want to distribute an application to get that into the hands of a lot of people. We've seen success stories of folks creating power apps and embedding them within something like Teams, and people will natively start using it without ever realizing that they're using a power app. They just think that they're using another part of Teams. So that's what we launched in November. I quickly want to show in the last few minutes that I have some of the new things that are coming uh, in the around the new horizon. So first, we have the, the big one is folks have been wanting to build a single Power App app and be able to embed it in multiple channels. But they want it to actually react to its context, right? So maybe you have um, a team for your sales team and you have a channel per account. So maybe one's for Contoso, one's for a car company, one's for a grocery store. And you want the Power App in the middle to actually provide information about that specific customer. So what that would involve is passing in context from Teams into Power Apps. So starting in a few weeks, you'll be able to do just that. What you're seeing right here is a power app where I'm doing something very basic, just grabbing the locale or language of the Teams client. So if we go into Power Apps, we'll see what how we do that. So here we have a text box, so pretty simple. And all we're doing is saying, hey, let's show the locale of Teams. And we're using the param function to grab in the locale field that's passed into Power Apps. You'll see that we're referencing locale, and that's indeed what we get. What we're working on right now is what's supported right now is just the locale field. And what's making its way into production is being able to pull all of the contextual parameters that Teams has to offer. So what I have pulled up is the Teams context interface. You can see all of the rich type of information that you'll soon be able to access within a Power Apps inside of Teams. So you'll only know the channel ID, its name. Some other good ones are, hey, what's the site URL? Uh, so you can use all this information within your app to create really customized applications that can really scale to whatever uh, Teams channel that they're embedded. Matthew, we have a quick question here. Yeah, um, let's go for it. Uh, folks, if you embed Power Apps as a first party app on the left hand side, do you have to update it? Like, no. does it receive? Yeah, Thank so um, if you, like, we can let's see. So here's my application. If I actually went in to the CT app, 
edited it and made some adjustment and did save and publish, those changes would immediately start reflecting within the application within Teams. There's two exceptions uh, or three. If you want to change the icon, the name, or the description, you will have to download that zip file again uh, and then update the app. To update the app, you'll go to where it is inside of your admin center. And there's a nice little update link where you can re-upload that zip file. Uh, but for most app changes, you won't actually have to update this, this zip file. Excellent. Thank you. Great question. And the other thing I was going to demo for you, but it looks like it's, it's not quite working for me today, is we're bringing model-driven apps into Teams as well, and that should be landing sometime in March. I see another question, Maura. If you publish to Teams, do you still have to share the app with users or the entire org on the sharing screen? You do. So you'll still want to make sure that you share the app to make sure that everyone has access to it. We have, oh, look, here's the model driven app working for me now. We do have plans to make that a little bit more streamlined, and that should be landing sometime around summer. Cool. Let's see, I'm scanning back up for more questions here. Todd, this is Mariano. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah, go for it. So just, uh, just so I'm completely clear, if you upload the um, upload process that you showed this now, any changes to that app will require you to re-upload that package, is that correct? Only if you want to change the name, icon, or description. So let's go ahead okay. and demo real quick. So if I want to change this, and maybe I want the title to be left line. If I save and publish it, it will be reflected within the Teams app. Gotcha. So the what you're putting into Teams when you upload these apps is merely the metadata that points to these things. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, that makes perfect sense now. So that uh, does that that makes even more sense back to Laura's question now, and then I see Lise also has the exact same question as Laura did. And, and because you're just giving a pointer in Teams to where this app exists in Power Apps, that's why you're, you're securing it separately and, and pushing it out and updating it through Power Apps. Yeah. That's so real nice. So you can have your ALM completely different for Power Apps as you update that Power App. And once it's registered in Teams, the only time you need to re-update it in Teams, like you said, I, I think, Matt, you said it was what, the title, the image, and the description? That's uh, correct, yes. Okay. So those are the three things that were in the right rail on that very first way you showed how to make the Team App, right? Yes. Yeah, so we, will, we try to make sure that you have, if you click on um, at Steam button, we try to provide that information so that you can review it before you actually download that, that file. And under the hood, what's happening is Teams has this thing called App Studio, where you can define a bunch of uh, properties for your application. Yep. Basically, under the hood, what we're doing is pre-populating all this information so that you don't have to fill it out yourself. Gotcha. As long as your Power App doesn't change a GUID or an environment, that's going to keep working just fine. I, I see a um, cool suggestion here. This one in the chat is, can one create a pinned tab that is essentially a bucket for org-wide apps? It's great to pin one app to the left nav of Teams, but what if you have a dozen org-wide apps? It looks like it's just kind of one icon equals one app on the left right now, not really that kind of click it and fly it out to many apps, huh? Yeah, so let me quickly share my screen again. So there's a couple things that you could do. So we do have this overflow menu in the left uh, that you could pin multiple applications. That's not to say that you couldn't have a hub app. Kind of the next thing that will probably land around April is be able to write code within Power Apps to navigate to different parts of Teams. Uh, once we light that up, you could build a hub application which could navigate to other apps that you brought into Teams. Yep, and a couple of folks, as soon as I ask the question, type that, <laughs> that into the chat too, so everyone's thinking along the same lines there. That's great. Cool. 
Well, hey, you know what? There's there are a few more questions in the chat here. And I think we're going to jump over to the next part of the call this morning. Um, but you know, thanks so much for coming on and showing us all these cool things. A lot of great feedback. A lot of people saying mind blown, love it, <laughs> etc. There are a few questions left in the chat, though. So maybe as we move on, if you could take a look at those and help those folks out too, that'd be awesome. Will do. Cool. Thanks again.